My name is John Burns, and welcome to another episode of Exile TV. Today we're going to look at interesting things you can do with IPSLA and Track IP on Cisco routers, which allow you to do many things. And one of the things we're going to look at today is modifying the actions of a route map depending on some external source that you're monitoring. So without further ado, here we're going to start start a little lab here. Now, <clears throat> a little background. What we're going to do today is we're going to monitor a proxy server on the internal network and we're going to use the status of that proxy server to decide how we send traffic out to the internet. So we have a route map that basically redirects traffic to the proxy server, which is fine, but what happens if the proxy server goes down? We don't necessarily want to black hole all of our traffic. So um, we can combine route maps with IPSLA, which will allow us to get away with this. So here we go. The first thing we have to do is we have to turn on IPSLA. So we're going to go and create an IPSLA monitor. And I'm going to config mode, IPSLA monitor. And you see there's tons of options there, responders, and they're used for many different things. But right now what we're interested in is just creating a monitor. <coughs> so in order to create a monitor, we're going to go one. Okay. And that's going to take us into monitor mode. Now under here there's many things, but what we want to do is we want to define the type of monitor. Okay. And what we want to do is we want to create an HTTP monitor, right? Because we want to verify that our proxy is working so that we can <clears throat> determine that it's okay to send packets, redirect packets on the local network to the proxy. So type operation get, get, right? And we want to get a URL. And what we want to get is http colon slash slash www.yahoo.com. We want to go and see if we can pull the yahoo.com page. And there's a couple other options that we want to do here. We want to define a name server. And we're going to use our local DNS on the network here. And we want to define the actual proxy to use, which is, I'm doing it by name just to avoid any DNS resolution potential problems that could come up. OK? And there we go. Now we got to set a timeout <coughs> in milliseconds. I'm going to give a timeout of 5,000 milliseconds. It seems reasonable for that. And that's it. So if we exit this, our, our SLA monitor is there, but it's not running right now. So in order to <clears throat> run the SLA monitor, we have to tell the router when we want to start running it and how long it's going to last. So let's turn that on right now. Let's do IP SLA, right? We want to do monitor statistics, I'm sorry, schedule, and we want to tell it what we want to do, right? So we want to set the schedule for the first one we just defined. We want to set the life time, how long it's going to last. I'm going to use forever because we don't want this to stop. And we want the start time to be now. Okay, so now that monitor is in place. So if we exit out of config T mode and we do show IP SLA monitor statistics, for the first monitor, <coughs> you'll see that it's successfully going to the internet, it's successfully getting the yahoo.com page, and it's using our proxy to do it, and the response code is OK, which is what we're looking for. Now, if I take down the proxy, you will see that, uh, you would see that that would say um, something other than OK. It would say timed out or no response or something along that those lines. Now, <clears throat> I'm doing this in the lab and the, and the proxy service production, so obviously I'm not going to be taking it down, um, but if something were to happen, that's that's what would happen. So the now, now that we have the monitor set up, we have to build a track object that will use that monitor. And to do that, we're going to go back into config team mode.
Control Shift 6 is not timing this out as fast as I would like it to. And I think that might have something to do with the fact that I'm on a Mac and it's not translating that correctly. But um, if you get anything like that, like a ping or a trace route that times out, if you hit Control Shift 6 6, you hit the 6 twice, it'll cancel out of there. But for some reason, it wasn't working for me right now. Let's go back and do a config T. And we wanted to create a track object, so we're going to create a track object number one. Now, this is the first track object, not necessarily the, the first monitor, okay? And then we want to tell it, we want, there's a couple options here. And they each have their uses, but what we're interested in is a response time reporter. And we got to tell it what to track. Now, this is the first object. So now we have that track up and running. So that's all we need right now. Um, we can go back and configure the route map. So let's configure the uh, access list for the route map. So we're going to do IP access list extended. Um, we're going to call it proxy. And the first thing we're going to do is deny TCP host. We're going to deny the proxy server because we do not want to create a routing loop where the route map is redirecting stuff back to the proxy, the proxy sends it out, then it redirects it back to the proxy, so we don't want to do that. So we're going to deny the proxy. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to permit TCP from the internal network to anywhere on port 80. And that's all we need in this access list because the last entry is an explicit deny. And if we do a do show IP access list extended proxy, you'll see that give me a second. Sorry. If we do a show IP access list proxy, you'll see that that's, it's, it's there. So now we can create the, uh, the route map. And the route map is going to go like this. Route map proxy, right? Permit 10, arbitrary sequence number. We're going to match IP address. And IP address is the actual access list name, proxy standard route map at this point. Here's where it gets interesting. We're going to set the IP next hop address, right? But instead of setting just the normal next hop, which would be the proxy, we're going to set verify availability, the proxy. And then it's going to do this by tracking an object, right? So we have to put a sequence number. This is in case you want to when you do verify availability, you could have three or four or five next hops, which is why you have to insert a sequence number. You have as many as you want. So sequence number one, this is the first one. We want to set the we want to track an object to determine if it's up, and the track object number is one. And that's it. Now all you have to do is just apply the route map to the interface, which I'm going to skip that step since we're not actually going to be using this. It's just a router in a lab. So if I do show route map proxy. you will see that it shows it's going to match the access list proxy it's going to set the IP next hop as the proxy server and you're going to see that it shows up so that means that it is actually forwarding packets now if for some reason I was to um, you know stop uh, the proxy this would show down and in effect it would leave the next hop unmodified and the internal clients would go directly out to the internet. So this is a quick video on, on um, using IPSLA to modify route maps and uh, I hope you all enjoyed it. And if you excuse me, uh, the tone of voice, I just got over the flu here so that's why my voice is a little shaky. Alright, well, I'll see you next time on Exile TV. Thank you very much.